We wanted to actually see through the kind of problems or issues that people have in you know, how do we actually make it even better. So 2.5 actually makes a lot of those things a little bit more easier for the developers to handle. And this SWIC actually becomes a little bit more smarter to give you some of the caching functionality so that your application level handling will be a lot more easier. And a good example is the caching of contacts so that the type ahead features and functions lie. You click on a phone number, immediately matching who is the person, who's the contact info. You can load up their pictures, essentially presenting in a move, concentrating more on the presentation part of the application and leaving the SWIG to handle a lot of these data handling instead of going all the way to the server, kind of making the SWIG a little bit more intelligent and smarter. Um, other than that, we also have a couple of new features. Uh, one thing is the SMS, actually an outgoing SMS feature is built into 2.5, so there will be an API call to, you can frame a text and you want to mail out an SMS out from your application, that will be available as part of 2.5. Um, security, I'll just go through that a little bit. So we are, have come up with two types of security. One is the, the connectivity connection itself, so from your application to the backend connect server connectivity. I'll talk about that. And then the other part is the user authentication. Yeah. Is the user, is the person who the certified the user is, and are they doing what they're supposed to be doing? Um, so what we do is we try to even hide that information as much as possible within this SWIG. So there is going to be a Ribbit public key that actually encapsulates uh, your user ID and password and pass it securely to the the backend server, and server actually authenticates, and along with the package will also be information about if you're developing some kind of app and if you have some kind of agreement with Ribbit saying my apps can do X, Y, and Z, those information and you know, what the application can do is also part of that package. So your uh, user credentials as well as your uh, application usage permissions will be all packaged into that public key, will be sent to the, uh, the backend and the backend actually authenticates that the user is the, the right valid Ribbit user. Once that's authenticated, then essentially the rest of the communication kind of go through the way it is. So the password will never send be in, uh, never be sent in clear, will always be encrypted. And any of the uh, password change or user ID change requests, any of those APIs will also be using those credentials to make sure uh, they are done in a secure manner. Uh, so then th that's basically the user authentication part. The connection part, what we do is we go through a set of a sequence here. The first connection uh, we will try over plain RTMP. So if you, your firewall is okay, let's through it, and your application is okay with it, and you don't need any special uh, authentication purpose, we'll first make an RTMP connection back to the server. That should actually satisfy a good number of applications out there. If you need a little bit more uh, tight uh, security, then you can actually try RTMPT, which is essentially in HTTP tunneling. There's a lot, there are some enterprise firewalls which block RTMP, so if you actually tunnel through HTTP, you should be able to go through, because a lot of them open up uh, port 80. Uh, that's the, the next uh, fall in line. And after that, and there are certain places where they even block that, so we actually uh, also support uh, RTMP TS, which is essentially HTTPS uh, tunneling. So RTMP actually tunnel through HTTPS. And as that act takes a much bigger bandwidth and more processing time, and so your capacity to handle number of calls or connections also gradually goes down as you go from you know, RTMP to HTTP to HTTPS. But as an application developer, all three options are going to be available for you to pick and choose what type of the application you do, especially enterprise folks. You know, you want to have some tight security built into it, as well as the user authentication, which we provide. Uh, mostly at the SWIC level, so there's a Ribbit public key that you can use, but as an enterprise, you want to have your own private key. You can work with Ribbit to get your private key, which will be used to the application. So that should cover kind of the to spectrum of what we're going to be supporting in terms of security in this release. Okay. And the another feature, uh, what we call UPhone, it's one of those where a lot of people in the forum have asked before. 
where they want to have the ability to make uh, a put a phone out there, just people come and just click. But at the other end, it calls a particular person. So if you have a customer support, you can put a phone call me button on your customer support. Anybody visiting your website, clicking on it, it's going to call your company customer support line. So it can handle any number of calls, as many uh, folks who are on the back attending, or it goes to a voicemail, which you can manage it on the back end on the Ribbit account. So that API support, what we call it, is, you know, that comes with a special uh, authentication package that is built into it so that uh, once you go and build your own phone, it belongs to you. It's going to call a predetermined number that you have set up as part of the phone. But anybody can call into it, and you don't have to know who that person is. It can be anonymous, but you click on it, it's going to basically dial your predetermined number, and you can answer it or let it go to the voicemail. Uh, that feature was one of the hot feature everybody requested as a variation of the two-legged phone. And uh, how do I put that on my blog site? How do I put it on my website so people can call me? Uh, that's a pretty nice feature. So we abstracted and built that into the 2.5 API. Uh, 